everyone, and welcome to Limited Time Only. I'm your host, Spencer, and I am joined by my co-host, Andrew Walden. Hey, everyone. How's it going? Hey, guys. Uh, sorry we missed a week. Drew was on a cruise. What were you doing? Uh, oh, bachelor party. Bachelor ba- party. Bachelor party. And our, our bachelor party was we went and watched uh, the League of Legends... North America Championship Series for anybody that follows that at all. So that was a lot of fun. Um, they have a pretty cool little arena set up. Um, it's not as big as other sporting arenas, but it was fairly well sized, and uh, the crowd was. It, 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 it's it's a lot different than watching a Magic event. I'll say that. So it it feels like you're actually watching a sporting event, and you know it was, it was pretty cool. Awesome. All right, well, this podcast is brought to you by Pure MTGO and MTGO Traders. The best place to buy your Magic the Gathering online cards is at PureMTGO – I mean, sorry, at MTGOTraders.com. You can listen to the podcast every week at PureMTGO.com. Uh, don't forget that you can support the podcast directly by going to Patreon.com slash CCMTG, uh, and we appreciate everything that we get. It makes doing more stuff possible, make draft videos could be a thing in the near future if we can just get enough uh, donations. Thank you so much to everybody who already donates. It means the world to us. All right. Uh, We have a new set. It's exciting. Today's going to be the common set review. It's going to be great, Drew. It's going to be great. But before we get there, let's do a pick two where we pick picks two and three, pick two cards. Uh, after our first pick has already happened, um, it's a great way to kind of discuss like where you, how to start your draft. Uh, our first pick was pretty easy. It was collected effort. That card is one white white for a sorcery. Escalate. Tap an untapped creature you control. Uh, you can destroy target pa- creature with power four or greater. Destroy target enchantment or put a one one counter on each creature target player controls. Uh, yeah, this card's great. Um... Reprisal effects tend to be okay in limited, as we see with cards like Spite the Monsters. You're generally fairly happy if you have at least one. Um, the fact that this can do a lot more than that is pretty awesome. Um, generally, your your best your best hope for this card is to kill the biggest creature, pump your whole team, um, and then if you happen to have an enchantment too, that's that's pretty cool. So that would be that would be a little overboard on the card, right? Like, that'd just be great. Yeah, I mean, but it it can definitely happen. I mean, there, there, I think there's enough enchantments in this set that I would not be surprised if you managed to where there's games where you get all three modes on it. So sure. Uh, so pick two, we have uh choices of oh crap, <laughs> I messed up. Oops. All right. Uh, no, that's too bad. I opened a new pack and got just all the broken blades. Too bad that wouldn't be our pick. <laughs> um, we have Graph Rats. That's two mana. That's one and a black for a two one. It's the one that few, that melds um, into the five six menace. Yep. Um, contingency plan. This card's pretty unplayable. Let's look at the top five cards of your library. Put any number of them into your graveyard in the back on top of your library in any order. Yeah, I'm never gonna play this. Yeah, it's that's you're digging deep if you're trying to get delirium that way. Uh, Distemper of Blood is one red and one for a sorcery. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn, and it has madness for one red. Um, it also gains trample. I don't know if I said that. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you did or not. Generally, I find this pretty close to unplayable. I did play this in my sealed deck at the PPT yesterday, uh, mostly because I had I was I was trying to blood miss out. I don't think I had other real options for building my deck. I probably did, but I wanted to see if Blood Mist was a good card or not. Was it? Um, not really. It yes. Won, it, it won me some games, but it was like kind of eh. Maybe in a really focused draft deck you could make it work, but I'm I'm thinking it's closer to not great. So Yeah, called it. <laughs> uh, uh, Field Creeper is next. It's two mana for a 2-1 artifact creature Scarecrow. I think Bronze Sable is quite good. Um, I think that having the artifact creature type is very good when it's something that you would normally just play in this set. So I'm actually a pretty big fan of this. Yeah, um, two ones aren't great in this set. Uh, no, they're not. There's a lot of things that get them. Yeah, um, so I it's it, it's not a great card, but it is it is a reasonable card for Delirium decks. I agree. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have Thermal Alchemist. It's a one and a red for an O3 human. Uh, you can it, tap it to deal one damage to each opponent, and then it untaps when you play a spell. Um, I saw a lot of people playing this in their sealed decks. I'm not sure how I feel about it. 
Uh, I think it's better than I initially thought. Um, and I, I kind of looked at it and thought to myself, well, this is, um, you know, it, it's an okay early blocker. It's not great, but it's fine. It blocks, like, you know, plenty of two power guys. Um, I... In the right kind of deck, I think this is this is this is an okay card that you're probably going to be reasonably happy with. So I, I think it's maybe better than what I initially thought. So uh, three of shield bearers or standard bearers next. It's a one white for a one one. You can pay two mana and tap it. Uh, one of those mana being white. Discard a card and put a one one human knight on the battlefield. I'm never playing this card. No, I, I don't like this card at all. Uh, Weirded vampire is four mana for a three three. You can it has madness for two and a black. Uh, this is the most filler of fillerist cards. Um, you'll play it, but it's boring. Yep. Uh, next up we have one white and three for a three two. Whenever it attacks, tap defending tar- creature uh, tar- creature. Def- <laughs> oh my gosh! Whenever whenever fiend binder attacks, tap target creature defending player controls. It's a human soldier named fiend bear. Um, I. I- I think this card's okay, like, as a top end in really aggressive decks, but if your deck's any sort of normal limited deck, I don't think this guy's all that great. Um, it just gets blocked by so many things, and you have to be attacking to tap their creatures, so it's okay, but I, I don't think it's that great. I'm actually a huge fan of this card. Um, I think that this makes it so you can play aggressive decks in this format, with which I think that without cards like this... It would be really hard in this format to play aggressive decks because of the way the format breaks down, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I mean it's 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 decent versus some of the emerge decks, uh, right? Because you know they sack a guy, they get a big creature, so they may only have one or two big creatures. So if you can deal with the other big creature somehow, I don't know, with the Garden Priest or something like that, and then attack and block, you know knock the other guy out uh from defense then it's probably decent but again i like i said i'm i i just am not a big fan of a four mana creature that trades with something with two power so okay uh i don't know i th- i think that like this is going to trade with something great a lot of the time because like let's say that let's say that you don't tap down their biggest creature you could just tap down their small creatures right and make them trade up with it because it's like a lot of the times when you're attacking, you can choose you can, I feel like this can create the board state, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I mean the problem with that though is like then it can be maybe problematic for your earlier creatures to attack. Well, it depends, right? Cuz if all you're worried about is this trading for a little thing, like I I don't know. I I I have had success with this card. I had 3 of them in my last draft deck and I loved it. All right, fair enough. So, yeah, I it's just it, it, to me, this card just feels like it's a little too easy for your opponent just to get at a reasonable trade with it, and then your tapper's gone. So, Grapple with the Past is next. It's one green and one for an instant. Uh, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard, then you may choose to return a creature or a land card from your graveyard. Uh, this card was insane for me. Yeah, I, 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 I love this card. Yeah, I I this is going to the front of the pack for me. I actually think this card is great. Yeah, this, this card is uh, – initially I was kind of like, eh, it's fine, but like the more I've played with it, the more I've just been super impressed with it. Uh, it's awesome in Delirium decks. Um, it also is like an instant speed in Delirium Enabler. I had that come up in one of my sealed games. I, I also had that come up in one of my sealed matches. Yeah, um, it's, it's, uh, it's much – Sometimes it's straight up raise dead, right, where you just incidentally get extra cards in your graveyard. You're like, I'm just going to get my best creature back. Uh, sometimes it lets you hit a land. Like, I kept, like, a, you know, in my red-green get deck, I kept, like, a two-forest hand with this, and then I'm like, oh, I got a mountain off with it. Um, yeah, I, I love this card a lot. I think it's uh, I, I think it's got enough going on that it definitely feels very much like a green impulse almost, so... Uh, Emrakul's influence is next. This is two green green for an enchantment. One of our listeners has informed us that he thinks this card is a build around and that we read it incorrectly. Um, I'm going to say that not only do I think that this is not close to a build around, I think that it is completely unplayable. And uh, there may be one situation in a couple hundred where it's correct to put this card in your deck, but you would be correct more often just never putting the card in your deck. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't think this is a build around. I I understand the deck. And that that um, you're referring to in terms of the Eldrazi uh, emerge deck, but the thing is, I think if you have the emerge deck, I don't I don't think you really want to be 
doing this because the problem is is that generally the emerge deck you have in in the course of a game you maybe have two to three emerge creatures total maybe um and when when you get those you, they have they're so big and they have have generally a good effect anyways when they come into play that i don't feel like you want to be playing an enchantment like this um uh so I- I, I'm gonna say, like, I think that there are decks you could conceivably build a deck that wanted this. I'm just saying that I think that you would be correct never putting this in your deck more often than you would trying to figure out the situations where it's correct. Yeah, and I mean, like, yeah, it's and it it, it is it is insanely situational on the draft, like whether you can build the deck because really the only really good, I mean, the. Uh, the green emerge creature at common is okay, but it's not great. The only really good emerge creature at common is Wretched Griff, and the problem is is that I think the non-emerge decks want Wretched Griff too, right? Like almost any blue deck is going to be happy to play Wretched Griff, so it's not like you're going to be picking up Wretched Griffs later in the draft. You're they're going to be getting taken very early by other blue drafters. Um, so yeah, so I I I don't like this card. Um, I don't I don't think it's very good. I I don't think I would ever take it super high. I would maybe be like maybe if I'm blue green super emerge deck, maybe I'll pick this up late. But I'm not. I'm definitely not taking it early. Uh, Hemlock Captain is next. It's one green and one for a two two. It's a human warrior, and whenever it attacks, each other human creature you control gets plus one plus one until end of turn. Uh. It, it's Hamlet Captain. It's fine. It's slightly better than a grizzly bear. Um. I was able to. Uh, you know, trade uh, one of my 2-2 two, two humans for a 3-3 three, three in one game with it. So, you know, it, it, it's decent. Narlet Dryad is next. It's one green for a 1-1 one, one death touch with Delirium. It gets plus 2, plus 2. Uh, this card is way good. Yeah, uh, it's Typhoid Rats with upgrade, or upside, so. All right, uh, the rare is Providence. It's 5 white, white for a sorcery. You reveal this card from your opening hand, and your life total becomes 26. And when you cast it, your life total becomes 26. Uh, I'm not taking that. Nope. So here's between Grapple with the Past and Narwood Dryad. What are you taking there? Uh, I'm going to take Narwood Dryad. Me too. I, I think that, like, Typhoid Rats was already great, and you give me upside on it, and I'm going to be a happy camper. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I like that card a lot. Um, you know, Death Touch is great on cheap creatures, and uh, it's not too hard to get this up to a 3-3. So, yeah, so I, I like the card a lot. Uh, plus, uh, Grapple with the Past is a common, so I would not be surprised to pick up, uh, you know, one or two more in the draft. And it depends on how much you, how much people are rating the card, um, especially early right now. I don't think people are rating it as highly as uh maybe other people are as um, we are yeah but i definitely know uh most of the experience limited players i played with said they think the card's also great so i would not be surprised if the format develops for grapple the past to be taken earlier and earlier so uh so pick three we have so our picks are uh is it collective bounty is that what it's called uh collective bounty i don't know which one that is you no, know, the, the the card that our first pick was uh, collected oh, collected effort. collected effort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we have a collected effort and an Arwald Dryad. Yep. Uh, we have Dawn Griff, the two three mana two two flyer. Um, this card's quite good. It's like I I'm a huge fan of Windrakes. Um, Olivia's Dragoon. This card is one black and one for a two two that you can discard a card to give it a flying. Woodland Patrol is a three mana. 3-2 Vigilant Human Scout. I'm not a fan of this card. Um, it, it's okay. I mean, it's fine. It's uh, it, it, it's it's a filler green 3-drop. You know, yeah. um, I've, I play, I've played it in every green deck I've had, you know, and I've, I'm not like, ooh, I have this card, but I'm just like, yeah, it's just a creature. It fills the curve, so. Yeah, I it's it passes the vanilla test, and then it has text that doesn't matter. I hate that. I hate it when they do that. <laughs> it's like, ugh. Uh, Cathar Shield, not taking that. Uh, Fiend Binder, we've already talked a lot about that. Uh, we have Falcon Reaver, this is just a red and a one for a 2 2, so red grizzly bear. Wretch Griff is seven mana for a, an emerge cost of five and a blue. For a three th- four flyer, when you cast it, you draw a card. Um, I, I the, the more the more drafts I've done, and I, I've done a couple drafts this weekend, uh, the more impressed I am with Wretched Griff. Yeah, me too. Uh, uh, 
Um, I think it's uh, I, I think it's very close to being one of the best commons in the set. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely going to be moving this to the front of the pack. Uh, we have Tethered Haunter. This is one blue and one for a two one flying. It's just a welcome turn, which means it's great. It's a great card. Uh, it, it's fine. Um, it's it's not. It's not bad, certainly, um, and it's it's good in certain kinds of decks, but sometimes you have decks where you don't necessarily want a Welcome Turn. And but that, hold on, but you're not going to get Welcome Turns late. If you're going to draft the Welcome Turn deck, you have to take Welcome Turns fast. Uh, generally, yeah. Uh, I, I, de- I definitely am not taking this over Retrogrift, though. Well, n- neither am I, but if Retrogrift wasn't in this pack, it's, I would take it over – I would be between this and Fiendbinder for me. Uh, yeah, what else is in the pack? okay we have keswick prowler next it's one green for a two one werewolf whore and you can transform it for five mana uh this card is quite good uh yeah i like this card i think more than the other two cards um uh savannah lions types cards tend to be uh okay and limited they're not great but generally you can just use them as i I i like to see them as grizzly bears that um having a little bit of an upside generally the upside being they're in your opening hand so that way you play them one turn earlier um the fact that this guy also turns into a four four that can't be blocked by more than one creature yeah it turns into an okay creature later so the i like okay i mean it's it's fine right like would would you spend five mana on a four four creature that can't be blocked by more than one creature yeah i would i mean i i don't think that's a great magic card I think it's okay, but I think the fact that this is essentially a split card, right? It's basically a uh, it's a Savannah Lion early, and then it is a that creature later uh, makes makes it a pretty good card. Yeah, I I I think that I'm moving this to the front of the pack to go with my to go with my uh, oh my gosh, I'm like I'm like losing it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even think right now to go. Oh my goodness. Drew, help me. What was uh, the green Nar- card we just took? Narwhal Dryad. Narwhal Dryad, thank you. Uh, and our next two cards that we have, or we have three cards left, sorry, are Ruthless Disposal. This card is four and a black. Uh, as additional cost to casting Ruthless Disposal. Uh, discard a card, sacrifice a creature, uh, discard a card and sacrifice a creature. Two target creatures get minus 13, minus 13 until end of turn. Uh, I still have not played with this card or played against this card. So it's kind of been cast against me three times. How has it been? I mean, it's been good. Yeah, I mean, it's it still seems decent to me. I mean, it's it, you're basically trading, you're trading a spell and your worst creature and your worst card in your hand for their two best creatures. So it is card disadvantage, but it feels to me like a huge upswing in card quality. Um, so. I I think this it's card not is... a card disadvantage, right? You're equal on cards. No, it's card disadvantage because you. Uh, oh, you have to discard a card. Yeah, yeah. So you're you're spending a spell, discarding a card, and sacrificing a creature. That's three cards, and they are losing their two best creatures. So that's two no cards. wonder I won all those games. <laughs> so it, like I said, it's card disadvantage, but it is it is card quality, generally speaking, um, on a huge upside. So I uh, th- I. I think I'm going to move this to the front of the pack, and here's why. This is funny. So uh, my reasoning is is I played with uh, – I did have a draft deck with Boldar and Pariah in it, the uh, rare vampire. And there was multiple games where I uh, I, I transformed the Boldar and Pariah when they only had two creatures, right? So I traded three of my creatures for two of their creatures, but it was worth it because of the board position or whatever, that I was like, I don't care that I'm losing a card here uh, to get rid of their only two creatures in play. Um, so because of that, I think I'm going to go ahead and move with this disposal at the front of the pack. I'm going to stick so far with Keswick Prowler, I think. Okay. Um, next, we have Vexing Scuttler. It's eight mana for a four or five. Uh, it has an emergent cost of seven. You, When you cast it, you may return to your instant or sorcery from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, this is also, I think, a really good emerge creature. Um, you get a pretty, pretty good body, four or five, um, and uh, you also get a buy back one of your best spells. Um, I've seen, I've was seeing people buy back Savage, uh, return Savage alliances. Um, 
what are some of the other spells that were getting returned? Uh, Rabid Bites, I think. Uh, so yeah, so I, I like this Emerge creature quite a bit. Okay. Um, next up, what, so what, what do you have? Do you have the, are you moving this up? Um, no, I think I'm still going to take Ruthless Disposal. Again, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent on that card, but I, 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 I think the fact that you get to kill your opponent's two best creatures is just so good that like, it's really hard to justify passing it. Um, and it's splashable. It's only one black. So next up, we have a rare in the pack, another rare. It's Lupine Prototype. It's two for a 5-5 five, five Artifact Wolf Construct, and it can't attack or block unless the player has no cards in hand. Uh, nope. I'm taking Kessick Prowler. Yeah, I'm I'm going to take Ruthless Disposal. Um, I, again, I, I'm, I'm not 100% on this pick. It could very well be that I think one of the blue Emerge creatures is better than it, but I think the fact that you, you just get to kill your two opponent's best creatures seems so powerful. Um, and it's not too hard to imagine setting it up where... But you just discard something you don't care about. Yeah, where you obviously discard something you don't care about. And, you know, you can sacrifice, like, I don't know, a token. You can sacrifice, uh, like, an exto- extant c- cultist. Uh, you know, some other cards that maybe get you a little bit of upside when you sacrifice them. So, uh, like a Desperate Sentry or something like that. So, yeah, I think, I, I think I'm going to go ahead and go with Disposal here um, and just continue to say, well, killing their two best creatures is worth the uh, losing the one card for it. So, All right, let's move on to our biggest movers. It's week one. Can we already have them? I already do. I already do as well. <laughs> <laughs> is it the same as mine? Uh, no. Oh, okay. I mine is red cards at, at large right now. I don't. I'm not a fan. Um, yeah. There, there's quite a few big things running around, so it's hard. Like I had a red draft deck, red green draft deck, where my opponent played uh, Bruna on turn seven in all three of our games. Very hard for a red green deck to, <laughs> to deal with Bruna. So, um, yeah, it it, it it was a little bit of a struggle dealing with some cards playing the red deck. Um. But for me, my biggest movers are Emerge. Yeah, the, that, I think that probably goes with my red cards. And, like, they're just the, – the. It, I think red also is lacking a little bit of common in this set. Yeah, um, there, there's not a ton of great creatures, right? There's some good creatures, but not like a, not like a lot of them. Yeah, and I don't know. I My sealed deck at the – the pre-release was red green delirium aggro which was sweet it was a sweet deck (laughs) weirdly but i I don't know like the there's some good spells that common at red and then there's just i it's maybe you just have to mishmash something together but that's my thought and i agree like the delirium card or not the delirium cards the the emerge cards are, are quite good like Yep, much much better than I think uh, I had initially thought. You know, I it, it was one of those things where you're like, you're not really sure. You're kind of like, well, is this is this good? You know, um, you're sacrificing a creature, which is a pretty big cost. Um, and some of them, the effect isn't great. Like, I, for example, I don't think uh, I don't really like Abundant Maw. For example, the black emerge creature, the one that drains them for three. Mm-hmm. Um, but Redshift was like every single time I like have seen a retrograde play, I'm like, man, that card is so good. <laughs> the first the first time I cast an emerge card it was Decimator Provinces, so Well, I mean, you know, if you're like you know, emerge to win the game, then yeah, it's pretty great. So And my opponent like was so rude about it. <laughs> he was like he like sets up his blocks to go to one. Sure. And then like is I'm surprised, like... I'm surprised you didn't kill him when you emerged it, but alright. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, you wiped his board. I'm assuming. So. Yeah, he had no creatures left. He goes to one. I have five creatures left. And he like draws his card and, and and like is like, all right, whatever. And then the next game, I do it again, and he's like, oh, so lucky. I'm like, well, I, I mean, mean, you know, a, it, a little. It it happens. Sometimes you draw your best card and. Um, I mean, I've, I've had that happen in limited before. So, um, I, we were actually, we were talking about it a little bit. Cause we were like, what do you think the best, uh, best rare slash mythic in the set is? And, and I, I think it's decimator, right? That's my thought. Yeah. I, I, we couldn't really think of, I mean, there's, there's obviously plenty of rares and mythics that are very powerful. Um, 
but I mean, Decimator yeah, just a bunch like of people were selling just just out of the Broken Blade, but like I think Decimator just is. Yeah, I mean, G- Giselle is great, but she dies to stuff. Yeah, I mean, she she dies to things. Um, uh, she's she's still decent late, but she's like not as great. Um, I mean, she she's still probably pretty good late, but yeah, I mean, she she does die to a couple things. Um, like there's 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 quite a few common removal spells that deal with her, right? Um, choking restraints, uh, Sigurd and Priest taps her down, Boon of Emrakul kills her, Decimator Province. You're just like, oh, I just kind of cast this and win the game. So, yep. All right, let's uh, let's move on. Let's go to our training round. So we're this week we're going to talk about our common set review. Um, let's start from the bottom this time. We never we always start from white. All right, let's start from the bottom. So, my number one, or let's, should we start with number three and go up? And do you want to do it? Totally backwards? Sure. Let's just go totally backwards. Deal. Three, I have backward survivalist. Uh, I think we have the same three in different orders. Oh, no, you have, you have, okay. Is that the, do you have the ramp guy at number one? I do. Okay. That card's quite good, too. All right, so at three, I have backward survivalist. At two, I have grapple with the past. At one, I have Prey Upon. You have Grapple with the Past 3, Prey Upon 2, and Uvenwald Captive at 1. Uvenwald Captive is quite good and was on my short list. Uh, Uvenwald Captive is great. Um, if I get past an Uvenwald Captive, I'm just thinking to myself, all right, I want to go green. Um, every time I played Uvenwald Captive, I'm like, this guy is awesome. Um, he ramps me. Um, he's insane late. Uh, another thing to keep an eye out for is if your opponent has an overall captive that's active and they pass with six mana, don't attack into it because <laughs> uh, your component can block and still activate and transform the overall captive in the middle of combat. Yep. Um, so that that I, I actually got two people with that, so keep an eye out for that. Yeah, uh, overall, I think let's just talk, kind of talk about what we – grapple with the past people have on our list. Uh, I don't think that other people have this this high yet. Uh, I think we both played with this card and instantly moved it up. Yeah, I mean, the problem is is that, like, I think after Uberworld Captive and Prey Upon, I can't really think of any, like, really standout green creatures. To me, they're all just random vanilla creatures, right? Like, you have a 3-2 for 3, you have a 4-3 for 4. Um, I don't know, what other green creatures are there? Uh, I mean, I have it one on my list. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's just it, it's just a smattering of random vanilla creatures. Uh, well, th- I, th- I think backward survivalist is actually just quite good. I it was fine for me. Um, it it was it was basically just. I mean, most of the time it was just a four three for four. Um, I wasn't ever playing it in dedicated delirium decks where it's a five four for four. Uh, but even with, there with trample with trample, sure. But even there, it's still to me it's just a vanilla creature, you know. And I I th- I think captive is the kind of card you want. Uh, in, in your green decks, right? Like, you know, it's it's the classic. Yeah. Ma- mana creatures are always great, and the fact that this can turn into a monster later is just awesome. So. Yeah, I did get the chance. By the way, I got somebody so tilted because I took Primal Druid in a draft, and they were like, "What is wrong with you?" And I was like, "No, oh, this card is fine." Yeah, I I actually it was funny. Uh, Aaron Maranaka had a uh, a deck and he had a couple primal druids in it, and he was like he's like oh I really want to try vessel and ascency and uh, what is it the the two three that when you sack a permanent you put a counter on it and I'm like I think primal druid's great in your deck and he's like no 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 and I'm like no I think it is. And then, like, we, we were playing some games for fun, and literally the very first game, he's like, I wish I was playing Primal Druid. <laughs> yeah, I think that card is quite good. Um, the, I, oh, I actually think the green is the best color again. I think that, I, I mean, I think that, I think it's pretty deep at common, actually, uh, whereas other colors are kind of boring at common, uh, specifically red. Uh, quite, quite happy. I think that, uh, the card, like, Prey Upon is easy to understand and, and so on. But I, I am interested to see that you have Uvewald Captive at your number one slot. That means good things for the color, I think, uh, to be honest, that, that I, there are a few cards that I had to leave off my list, including that card. Yeah, I, I yeah, I mean, it's, U- Uvewald Captive was exactly what I thought it would be, which is uh, a ramp creature that is just great, great yeah. light, so. Yeah, and... Please note that Wolfkin Bond is not on either of our list, and that card is still great. Yeah, I, I do think Wolfkin Bond is good. I, I think it's better than most of the uh, creatures. Most, most of the beatdown, well, attack creatures that want to attack. So 
Yep. Uh, up next, we have red, where uh, we have the exact same list. Yeah, I mean, red, red, I think there's a huge drop off in quality, like you were saying, after the first, basically two or three cards. So maybe after the first card. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, Al- Alchemist Greeting is fine. I guess we should read the list first, but. Yeah, so at number three, we have Brazen Wolves, which is three mana for a 2-3 that when it attacks, it gets plus two plus O. Uh, Alchemist Greetings, which is five mana or red and four for a sorcery that deals four damage uh, to target creature, and it has badness for two. So some Boulder Salvo-esque card here, which is good. That's good. Um, And then obviously Galvanic Bombardment came in at number one. Uh, it's one red for an instant that deals two damage to target creature. Um, it, the, and then if, if, if pl- X plus two, where X is the number of Galvanic Bombardments in your graveyard. Um, Galvanic Bombardment is interesting. I think if you ever get a draft deck with more than one, like, good on ya. Like, yeah, I if mean. If you get a, if you get a draft deck with four of these, like, you <laughs> yep, you got the best deck. <laughs> Something went wrong at the table. Um. I, uh, yeah, can, can I also make a comment that it's insanely annoying that it's called Galvanic Bombardment? Because there's so many times when we're like, Galvanic Blast! No, it's Galvanic Bombardment, you know? Because <laughs> it's so similar and yeah. it's just easier to say Blast. But anyways, um, yeah, I mean, Galvanic Bombardment is clearly far and away the best red common. I mean, it's not even close. Uh, Alchemist Greeting is fine. Um, it's not quite as good as Boulder Salvo. <laughs> Boulder Salvo, it's generally very easy to set up Surge. Or, well, Boulder Salvo, you know, goes with a certain Bloodbraid Elf type card, and so. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I I was gonna say Boulder Salvo goes good with spells, so. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, so they can be creature spells, which your Saddleback or deck is pumping. Sure, um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Alchemist Greedy is generally just five mana deal four to something, which is. It, it's boring, but it, it is... It's surprisingly spell. better in red than in black, right? Like, we can just agree on that. Sure. And sometimes you do get madness with it, which when you do get madness with it, it's it's great. It goes from, like, being just fi- a fine removal spell to a very good removal Especially spell. if you get it at, like, instant speed, then it's just like, oh, wow. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Blue, or black, we have next. Um, we have pretty different lists on this as well, I believe. Um, you have Borrowed Malevolence at 3, Certain Death at 2, and Boom of Emrakul at 1. I have Olivia Drag- Olivia's Dragoon at 3, Thraben Foulblood at 2, and Boom of Emrakul at 1. So we both have Boom of Emrakul at 1. Um, um, yeah, I actually updated my list, sorry, I because I I forgot about the Transform black cards. Uh, I have Midnight Scavengers at 3 over Borrowed Malevolence. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Okay. Cool. So... Uh, Boon of Emrakul is pretty easy to put at one. It's a removal spell that also helps you enable your Delirium decks. Delirium is very much still a thing in this format. Um, yeah, I, what, is, what is your thought on the the Midnight? So I th- when I made my list, I did not realize Midnight Scavengers was a common. I thought it was an uncommon. Um, I thought that it was a common and uncommon that melded together. What you, what is your opinion? It's, so it's five mana for a three three. When it enters the battlefield, you can return target creature with commander cast three regress from your graveyard to your hand. So you can go get back your little rats and then meld them together. Yeah, um, I mean by itself, even without the meld, this is a decent black common. Um, grave tiggers tend to be very good in black. This isn't quite grave digger obviously because you can't get large things back, but it's it's very easy to get a two for one with this card, which is, I think, you know, generally you're very happy with, that's, uh... That's actually why I have foul blood, uh, or Thurban foul bloods at number, as high as I do. Uh, reading that card and then playing with the card, I thought it was quite easy to get a two-for-one with the card. I think they're very much forced to block you when you, when you have menace with this card. Uh, it's very easy to generate card advantage that way. Yeah, uh, I mean, Midnight Scavengers is just always a two-for-one. Well, I mean, 90... 90- to 95% of the time, it's always a two-for-one. Um, so, yeah, I, I I think the card's good. Uh, there's been plenty of cases where, you know... Yeah, like I said, like I, I, are great. I thought the card was an uncommon, so it sure. wasn't wasn't on my <laughs> my list of cards. Would, to... you like, would, you like to, would you like to add Midnight Scavenger somewhere in your list? <laughs> uh, yeah, I would definitely have it above Olivia's Dragoon, which is the card we talked about earlier, the two 
the two two for two with <laughs> uh, you discard a card to give it flying. Um, I, I would actually probably have it at number two and move Thraben uh, Thraben Valbloods down. Um, yeah. What what did you come in at number two? Uh, I have certain death, which is the five in a black destroy target creature. You uh, I was you gave that was, life and your opponent loses two life. I was gonna have that really high, but I was like six mana, so many manas. It is six mana is quite a bit, but I mean this is this kills anything. Um, and the drain is not irrelevant. There was actually uh, we we were doing some practice sealed, and there was quite a few games where. Uh, the drain was actually very good. It would swing a race in my favor. Oh, absolutely. Swinging for life is pretty good. Yeah, so I, I, I like this card, um, and I, I'd i be pretty happy, I think, having, like, two of these in uh, almost all my black decks. Okay. Yeah, I, I it was on my list of cards that I, like, looked pretty heavily at, and maybe I'm spoiled, and I just, like, don't want to admit that this is a card that I would play a lot of. <laughs> <laughs> but... I mean, uh, yeah, sure, it's like more mana than Oblivion Strike by quite a bit, but you know, it 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 kills it, it kills anything. So, all right, coming in next, we have Blue. Uh, why don't you, why don't you, uh, why don't you read yours? All right, so my blue cards, because again, I'm 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 assuming we're not including Retchgriff. We we were not including Retchgriff on this. Yeah, so basically, Retchgriff is kind of an asterisk of like this is probably the best blue card, but uh, it's. It's not technically a blue card, so it's kind of floating over there in the colorless spot, but it's like, hey, play me in the blue decks with islands. So uh, so actual blue cards, not retrograde. Uh, number three, I have Spontaneous Mutation. Uh, number two, I have Drag Under. And then number one, I have Exultant Cultist. Okay. So what is what is your – so you have Exultant Cultist at number one? I do. Ugh. <laughs> I had that card at, like, number five. Uh, I – so – on its own, like, as just, like, a 2-2 two, two for 3 that, you know, you draw a card, I actually think is pretty good. Um, it's surprising how often your opponent's like, well, I can't attack. Like, that's a terrible trade for me. Uh, but the fact that this enables, like, Emerge, it, and it's in the right color to enable Emerge, no, most notably Retchgriff, uh, makes this card, I I think, pretty good. I mean, maybe it's really worse than Drag Under, but I every single time I've seen Exultant Cultist played, I've been like, yeah, this card's awesome, uh, your opponent can't attack, you gotta Emerge it. Um, like, it was so funny, like, we were, we were playing some draft games, and like, uh, like both of us had exulting cultists out, and like, like we just weren't attacking each other because we're just like, well, you can't do anything, which is exactly what you want in a deck where you're playing big, powerful emerge creatures. So yeah, coming in for a number three for me, I have Fog Walker. Coming in at number two, uh, two I have uh, in in I can't how do you say this? Ingenious yeah, Scob. Ingenious Scab. Yeah, I think. Scob? I think it's Scob. I don't think it's Scab. Sure, whatever. <laughs> number one, I have Drag Under. The reason that I have Drag Under at number one is this is the kind of card that you will play every single one you get in your deck, um, and it's good. So it just brings it to the top for me. Like, yeah, you're just you're just gonna play every single one. Oh yeah, no, I agree. I mean, dra- Drag Under, I feel like is a very high blue pick, very easily. Um, uh. I'm surprised you have Fogwalker so high. Uh, I did not until somebody crushed me with a couple of them. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's I I, I mean because I, I'm I think Fogwalker is just like quite a bit worse than Stitch Mangler. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I I got got by them, and so I could just be hurting on the inside a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the Ingenious Scob is. I mean. It's, literally just water courser with upside right yeah no i i i i do like ingenious scab quite a bit um it's it's another blue creature that i'm pretty happy to have a couple in my deck so um yeah so coming in any thoughts on blue did you feel like blue was deep did you feel like blue was shallow um i i think because of emerge i think blue is actually quite good okay um I, I I think the Emerge cards are, like I said earlier, I think they're better than I'd given them credit for. Blue is clearly one of the key Emerge colors. I mean, blue-green is just, like, the color combination you want to be. Yeah, but I think, 
I, I think even without green, I think I think if you were like, okay, if I had to choose only one color that I wanted my emerge cards yeah. in, you would want to be blue. Um, the you have the best common easily in emerge. You have quite a few good emerge enablers in blue. Um, you have pretty good uncommons in blue. You have a great rare in blue emerge. So I feel like like from you know the whole strata of blue is all about emerge. Has the best emerge cards generally speaking. Um, so you could pair blue emerge with other colors as well you know you could pair it with white and just be like well i don't have any quote unquote white emerge creatures but i'm playing blue emerge creatures and white is letting me enable them as well so yeah i i think um uh yeah that that's my general assessment of the color all right let's move on to white where i believe we are only different on one card uh number three you have desperate sentry number two you have cigar and priest number one you have choking restraints i have fiend binder at three uh, Sigardian Priest at two and Choking Restraints at one. I this color I also thought was quite shallow. Um, could, really good one and two, but like pretty shallow after that. Yeah. Um. I, I mean, certainly there's not there's nothing after Choking Restraints and Sigardian Priest that really jumps out as a great common. Um. I like Desperate Sentry as. I, Desperate Sentry to me is kind of like a nice flexible creature. Um, it's great in Delirium decks, right? Because sure. once it's a 4-2, it's like, you know... Des yeah, Desperate Sentry, for those who don't know, is 2 and a white for a 1-2. Cuban Soldier, when it dies, put a 3-2 colorless Eldrazi Horror onto the battlefield. As Delirium, it gets plus 3 plus 0. Yeah, so I mean, when you have Delirium, this is uh, quite good, right? You know, it's a 3 mana 4-2, which is a decent rate, but not great, because obviously it trades with a lot of stuff. But, you know, you'll, you'll play 4-2s for 3 pretty easily in your decks. Uh, but then the fact that it also dies is, you know, it gives you a token is very good. Uh, it's, like I mentioned earlier, it's good with emerge creatures, even though white's not really the emerge color. If you happen to be playing, like, say, a blue-white deck and you have some retrogrifts, you know, you're more than happy to sacrifice your desperate sentries to feed your griffs. Um, so I, I like I like the fact that there's enough going on. And if your opponent has, like, X1s, like, they don't ever want to trade their X1s at all with this guy, so... Yeah, for me, I uh, got to draft the deck with, I already said, three Fiend Binders. It sounds like a lot, but, like, I had a lot of Guardian, Guardian of Pilgrims. I had a couple of the the, the Steadfast Cathars, and then I even had some Desperate Sentries in my deck. Um, where it's able to play like green, green, white, delirium, aggro esque kind of deck, um, and uh, that topped out with Decimator Provinces, and the deck was quite insane. Um, and my Fiend Binders made it so that my, my Decimator killed them every time. So, also made my Decimator really cheap <laughs> if I wanted it to be. <laughs> Uh, basically, j just draft Estimator Provinces and cast it, and you'll win lots of games. <laughs> yeah, it means that's true, but I won lots of games without casting the Decimator. All right, all right. Um, but no, I, I did find Fiend. I think that Fiend Biter is better, but I, I also was like super aggressive while people were dirtling, so that's like gives you upside. Um, that they, they, the others don't have. Overall, I do think that the obvious best white cards are commons are really obvious. Um, let's talk about those ones. Uh, we have, obviously, uh, Sigardian Priest. So this card is two mana. It's one and a white for a one, two human cleric. You pay one, two, and tap it to tap a non-human creature. Yeah, I mean, tappers are great. Um, you know, obviously you can't tap down humans, but I think the one advantage is, is that, like, generally humans tend to be smaller, right? I mean, there's... Maybe there's some of the werewolf humans when they're on their front side, like, say, Gastuff Arsonists from Shadows over Innistrad that are a little bit bigger. But for the most part, you're not really like, oh, man, I can't tap humans. Like, you, you're you generally wanting to tap non-humans anyways because they're generally much larger. So I, I think this is, you know, a very good tapper. So Okay. Um, and then at number one, we have Choking Restraints. This card is uh, three mana, correct? Yep. It's, uh, two and a white. It is an enchantment, and it, an enchanted creature can't attack or block, and you can pay three white white to sacrifice it to exile that creature. Yeah, I mean, generally, this is just three mana pacifism with uh, a little bit of an upside, you know, um... For a big mana investment, it turns into a straight-up hard removal spell. 
Um, but generally, you're just playing this as three mana pacifism, which is, you know, a, a card you're happy to have in your deck, so. Yeah, I have played with this card, and I have activated that ability twice so far. Sure. So, I mean, it happens. Yeah, no, it does. And, uh, I mean, you know, if you have the spare mana laying around, you know, if you're slightly flooded and you're like, well, I have five extra mana and not anything to do with it, you might as well exile the creature. It prevents your opponent from sacrificing it later to something. It prevents them from uh, bouncing it. It prevents them from, you know, uh, anything like that. And it puts an enchantment in your graveyard if you need delirium. So, so for me, um, now that we're wrapping this up, we've done our uncommons, our commons. Uh, for me, in order... People love these kind of lists. I have green has the best uncommons and the best commons, putting it at number one. Blue is at number two with quite good commons uh, and decent uncommons. Uh, black comes in at number three, just a decent color. White comes in at number four, and red comes in at number five. Um, I I do like green um, quite a bit. Um, so I'm I'm gonna go ahead and say yeah, I'll agree with you for right now and say green is number one. Um, and blue is number two, uh, mostly again because I think I think emerge is so pushed in that color, and I yeah. do feel like I do feel like uh, emerge is much better than I thought it was. Um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and say uh, red is number three. Oh and, really? Yeah, and I, th- I I think part of the reason is mostly off of the back of their uncommons. Um, I think red has some very good uncommons, right? Uh, Savage Alliance I think is pretty insane. That's the one that deals one to all creatures and two to one, or two to one creature or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That card is quite good. Yeah, that card's very good. Uh, Incendiary Flow is good as well. Um, so I, I, I do like red. Um, and there's still there's still a bit of a you you can still build a uh, a vampire deck right with Eldritch mm-hmm. Moon. Um, so I think the fact that you have that going on, the fact that you can set up a tribal deck, does make me feel like that red does have some potential in your draft decks. I do agree that the commons after the first couple commons do fall off by quite a bit, but I think there's enough upside with the color that I, I do think I like it a little bit more than okay. black and white. I'm happy to hear that. I hope that you're right, because I, I mean, my, if my three favorite colors are the top three colors, I'm going to be a happy camper. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to say... Uh, uh, I'm going to say black is the next best color, and then white, I think, is the worst color. I, I'm pretty sure white is the worst color just overall. Um, it might be that black is a little bit better than red. Black does have some good uncommons as well. Uh, you know, murder is great. Um, but, yeah, so that, that that's kind of where I come at at the set. I do feel like the colors are fairly close, though, for the most part, in terms of where they're at. Like, I'm not... I'm not like you know when I'm drafting. I'm not like oh man, I think, I'm not in a certain color. So I don't. Th- yeah, I don't think that it's anything like that. Like I don't think that there's a huge disparity. I think that blue and green are a little bit ahead, and then of the others at least. Um, but like not to the point where you should. Oh, I'm gonna be drafting blue and green because they're the best colors. Like they're just a little bit better. Yeah. I, yeah. Absolutely. I I really do think it's it's this is gonna be like most limited formats where the rares you open, the cards you get past, that's all going to dictate, you yep. know, what your uh, Ben Stark tweeted doing. today that this is the best limited format in the past five years outside of Modern Masters One. Oh, that's uh, that's impressive. Um, I yeah, I mean, I've I've liked it so far. Um, it's it's definitely felt like uh, it's a it's a fun limited format. I maybe I haven't explored it quite enough to really to really get a feeling for it. Um, but when it hits Magic Online, I'll probably be drafting a little bit more. So I will, you know, I'll get to really kind of dig in and uh, see what I like about it. And then obviously the Pro Tour is coming up soon. So we'll get to see how people are drafting at the Pro Tour, which, you know, informs a lot of information about the limited format as well. So, but yeah, I, I, I've liked it so far. It's been, it's been fun. So. Awesome. Uh, this pro- Don't forget that the Training Grounds is brought to you by GameGrid. You can check them out at playatgamegrid.com, where they will soon be selling sealed product for all of you to buy. Uh, thank you so much to GameGrid for the sponsorship. And you can also check out Drew's Pick'em articles there. Yeah, I've been doing that for uh, – well, you know, I've, I'm I'm writing those every week, um, and 
yeah, I mean, they're pretty basic. They're pretty simple, basically just first picks out of the first packs just to kind of get an idea. Um, and I think those are kind of useful for players, uh, when, especially when the set first comes out, to just kind of get an idea of like, all right, you know, what, what should I be taking out of my draft pack? So, yeah, I will say I will say that even though I had read as the biggest mover down because of the commons, uh, before we go, I do want to say that I did get the chance to play with the red four drop that deals two damage to two that deals one damage to two creatures oh yeah that's another great uncommon from the uh, color. yeah that card and then it transforms for six uh that card's insane yeah just, just in case anyone was wondering yeah yeah that that's the thing is like i red has a lot of really good uncommons like it's very, it's actually very good uncommons it's actually funny my sealed deck had that savage alliance and incendiary flow in it yeah and and you have spreading flames as well at uncommon right yes so there's 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 a ton of good red uncommons. It's just the commons are kind of like. Then it, it's going to be interesting because like uncommons do push you into the colors you are, which makes me frustrated with red, right? Because you get pushed into red, and then by the second half of the pack, you're just like, oh. Yeah, picking up the drag. There's even uh, there's like Weaver of Lightning too at uncommon, right? Which is like not quite as good as the other uncommons we mentioned, but it's still a great creature. Um. So yeah, so there, there, there's a ton of really good red uncommons. It's just the commons after Galvanic Bombardment, you're just like, me. All right, let's uh, let's wrap this up. Do you have any shoutouts this week? Or where can people find you? Let's do that first. Where can people find you, Drew? Uh, I am on Facebook, uh, Andrew Walden, and I'm over at Twitter, at MTG Drew. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. And like you said, mentioned earlier, I do write uh, regularly for GameGrid at playatgamegrid.com. You can find me on Facebook at Spencer Stephen Helen. You can find me on Twitter at Spencer13H. You can find this podcast every week on puremtgo.com, mtgotraders.com, uh, constructedcriticism.com, and mtgcast.com, and soon on playatgamegrid.com. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening this week. Drew, do you have any shout-outs? Uh, I was going to give a shout-out to Aaron Maranaka for winning the PPTQ yesterday, but I really I'm going to give a shout-out to Travis Padilla. We played... Uh, several hours last night, uh, a game called Sheriff of Nottingham. It's a game with, like, bluffing and bribing, and uh, uh, he was trying to be the wild card, and uh, he did not win a single game, so. <laughs> All right. Well, I have an anti-shout-out to Aaron Murinaka for winning a PPDQ and not getting to play any modern this year. <laughs> Congratulations, Aaron. He you was... won a limited one, so now you can't play modern. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was actually kind of happy about that. He's like, oh, good, I don't have to play modern. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> so I now now I get to venture into the modern format where I'm like, oh, man, there's a million things going on here. So, All right. Uh, huge shout out to my wife, Devonair. We are finding out the gender of our baby today. Ooh, exciting. Yeah, we it's in an envelope, so we're having a gender reveal party that you're more than welcome to come to if you have time tonight, Drew. But, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. I'm going to find out what's cooking inside of her belly. So, (laughs) all right, everybody. Don't forget to check out our sponsors at uh, MTG Traders, Five Color Combo, and at uh, at playatgamegrid.com. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you very much. Have a good day.